a ton of fun. Oh, great. I got Kirk calling in. Hey, Kirk, I'm so glad you called in. You're on the front Hi, page. How are you? I'm great. Congratulations. Matthew Thayer has you plastered all across the Maui News today. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's awesome. I'm glad he came down to take a look. Yeah. Well, gosh, is that cool? Because you know what? I, I um, have always loved what I have been finding out has been going on at the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center for ages. And um, But I have to say, I gosh, I mean, when I saw you were doing this, amazing mural i was just blown away because i'm a fan of your artwork you um people can um see um can see your wonderful artwork um if they go to your website and what's your website uh it's kurokawa.com and you do usually this beautiful i mean really beautifully crafted color um works but interesting i had to ask you how come you decided to do black and white for your mural at the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center? Well, I, was, I, would, I looked through their archive of photos and artifacts here, and I um, felt that I wanted to keep that black and white photography feel because it had this nostalgic look to it, and I wanted to keep that in the, in the mural itself. Uh, and, you know, I thought it would give it some authenticity to to the images as well too i think you're right a, a period i think you're right were these from um a lot of them were they taken from old photos or were they taken from news stories or where did you get uh the images well, they're all old photographs that were taken by i believe from the soldiers themselves um you know i i i, I took i took it on as a project where we were not trying to single out and portray specific people, so I didn't really pay attention too much on purpose to a cool who I was looking at and their names. I kind of just looked through images of these men, and I, you know, I just chose pictures that I thought would fit well and that uh, spoke something to me and that had a little bit of emotion as well. Um, but, yeah, I believe these photographs were all taken by the soldiers themselves. Well, um, and I love what the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center does. They just are going to, they have just opened up the exhibit Loyalty, Courage, Sacrifice, the 442nd Story Part 2. And that exhibit opens to the public, right, it's open now through September 13th. Um, and right. it's open from 12 noon to 4 o'clock. Um, but, um, again, when you see some of these pictures, and I have been there and seen them, um, you do see, and I think I can tell by, you know, your, even the pictures that Matthew did, he's such a great photographer, there is this camaraderie and this support that you are seeing in some of the old pictures, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. You know, it seems like, and the, some of the stories that I've heard, too, you know, they went over there and they supported each other and became family, their brothers, um, you know, and I saw that came across in their photographs and, and, you know, just from talking someone to some of these men, I feel the same, the same way. And, you know, even just today, when I'm out there painting and some family members come and talk to me, it, it you know, they all feel that way. And I feel that way because of that. Well, uh, it is a unique situation because, um, ha having followed the whole story, a lot of these um, heroic men really didn't come out and talk to their families about it until the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center started doing some of these events. They felt very um, wanting to protect their family. Some of them really kept it rather quiet. And it isn't until the last 10 or 15 years that a lot of these men have really um, talked about their background, but unfortunately, by that time, a lot of them are passing away now. And what you're seeing are some of the um, second and third generation um, family That's members, right? right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So their family members are telling their stories now, um, and it's fantastic. We, sh you know, we all can learn a lot from them um, about how to be brave and do what's right and. Uh, you know, they they were special people, and yeah, they you know they were. I 
biggest, you know, there were a lot of things that happened in war, that happens in war that, you know, people don't like to talk about. Right. Um, but I still believe that we can learn from that and we can all become better people because of it. Um, it the uh, it was January twenty eighth, nineteen forty three. The War Department announced that it was forming the Nisei Combat Team. They called for fifteen hundred volunteers from Hawaii. And an overwhelming 10,000 men volunteered, of which, out of those 10,000, 2,686 were selected. They joined with the 1,182 Japanese-American recruits who volunteered from the continental U.S., many from behind barbed wire of internment yes. camps. My gosh. So they've been interned, and they still volunteered to fight. Yeah, and put amazing. Their- Amazing. They put their life on the line for pride in showing their commitment to America. Um, and meanwhile, their family still was, uh, many of them, inter- interned. Um, it was activated in 1943 at Camp Shelley, Shelby in Mississippi. And they trained there before they left for Italy in um, April 22, 1944. And then they saw their first day in combat in June 26, 1944. Um, by that date, 100 IFB had already been in the Mediterranean theater for over nine months and had been involved in many significant battles, including the Battle of Monte Cassino. And after the two units merged, the 100th IFB and the 442nd RCT formed a single inventory infantry regiment. Together, they became the most decorated unit of its size and length of service in the history of the United States Army. Now, the thing that's interesting about this, Kirk, is that this didn't become realized to the public till just the last, I mean, people are now in the last 10, 15 years are finally recognizing this, right? That's right. That's yeah. right. It's, it's, um, it, it is, it's sad because of there were, you know, prejudice. Yes. Um, feelings that were in the country and. Um, thankfully, things have changed, and you, you know that's why it's now you know now it's known, and um, you know we we can be proud of it. Yes, sure. absolutely. Yeah. So, how did you get involved in doing this mural? Um, you know, really, it was just from uh, talking, talking with fr- a friend and uh, Sadie Ota, and. She happens to be on the board here, and we were just talking, and it just came up about, you know, possibly doing a mural, and I was, you know, I said, sure, I would love to, and and Deidre T. Garden, who were, was here, working here at the, at the center at the time, um, I also worked with her on the governor's portrait, mm-hmm. um, Governor Abercrombie's portrait, oh. so those, so those two um, people that I have, you know, known for a little while has kind of been a big part of it of why, how I got to be here to start painting. So it just, you know, just from really just talking and, uh, you know, things, one, one thing led to another and I'm here painting. So it's great. Are you, I mean, you, what is your usual, usually you, you don't paint, um, and do something like this in murals. Do you, have you done other murals? I've done other murals, but um, it, I have. This is my first big mural by myself. Um, I've done it with a group of people, uh, but you know, yeah, it, it really isn't something that I usually do. I'm more known for my gallery work or my portraiture. Yeah, and you've been in, um, you've been yeah. in Art Maui a few times, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, and and you're very recognized. I mean, your your works are exquisite. I mean, they're really beautiful pieces. Sometimes. Um, people sometimes birds but but for something like this did you find yourself kind of reaching outside your comfort zone to create an expression of what this was all about oh for sure and um, you know there's been uh, a lot of kind of uh struggles i guess you could say and it just with the material uh and painting with outdoor exterior paint so that's different from what i usually use which I'm usually using oil paint, so it makes a little bit of a difference and, um, in the way that paint reacts. And also just being outdoors changes a lot. I'm usually in the studio working and comfortable. 
but yeah, it, there's some challenges for sure. Well, coming off that water right there, you're right off uh, Kaluuya Harbor. Wind comes in pretty strong from there. Plus, you, it's been awfully hot too. Oh yeah, the last couple of days have been very hot. Um, and yes, and the wind does pick up here quite a bit. Actually, the first day I painted, uh, my tent broke, and wow. then I had an umbrella after that, and that that lasted for <laughs> maybe about ten days. And but still fixing, I was fixing it and refixing it. Finally broke. Um, but that's you know the other thing is that there was a just a tremendous amount of community support. I've had people drop off tents for me here. I've had um, someone actually make me a, a windbreak that I use now. That's my shade oh. on a windbreak. Oh, that's great. It's fabulous. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? It's it's. I've watched that space for a long time. It wasn't built, right? And we have saw it for right. a long, long time as an empty field. So mm-hmm. it was so special when it finally got built on Gro- Gopher Broke Road, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and 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 then to see it kind of formulate, and then to see the different exhibits, and sometimes the movies and the talks and things that happen, um, has been really um an, a major part of this island and pride in the culture, and then now to see this beautiful mural being done, um, I think adds another whole dimension to it. It's coming alive because you know it's amazing, Kirk. A lot of people drive by that road. You see them all the time. It's a constant flow of traffic. But yeah. most people never drive in, right? <laughs> right. They just drive on by. So with you doing this, it kind of draws, it's an invitation of sorts for people to take a look from the outside to come in, right? Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I hope it, it, it invites people to come in and take a look and come into the center and see what's here. Well, yeah, we only yeah, have yeah. a minute left, so what? when people drive by and they want to drop something off nice for you, what do you like? Oh, I just, you know, just come and say hi. Aww. It's the best thing, just to come and say hi, say hello, and take a look at the paintings, come and look at the show here. Yeah, and show your support for the Nisei Veterans. So, yeah. Well, I mean, you're not going to even ask for some Krispy Kreme donuts or... Chili? Uh, or maybe, maybe a coffee. Maybe coffee a coffee. Nice Coffee's <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> I, you know, you you really are a fantastic artist, and we're lucky to have you. And um, oh, thank you. It's it's just so beautiful to see you taking on this wonderful project. And it was funny because I planned to talk to you um, yesterday, and then to see the picture that Matthew did um, today again brings it um, to more awareness. And and I'm sure some people um, have seen it. You probably have a copy. Did you go out and get a newspaper or two? Oh, yeah, I got one. <laughs> okay, I, I understand that. Um, and it's good also that you're getting recognized because you are a very talented artist, and this is a labor of love, and, and it's a way to share the um, the spirit of culture and aloha that um, is part of Unique to Maui, right? Oh, for sure. Uh, you know, really, just I'm, not, I'm halfway through, and I, this, the support that I've gotten from the community has been amazing and I, I kind of wish I could just keep on painting and just feel that love. It's oh, awesome. Oh, we love you, and thank you so much. A big aloha to you. All right, thank 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 you.